Welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of Time for BL. This is a podcast where we review movies, TV shows, comic books, novels, all in the boys love genre. On this episode, we're going to be reviewing Dark Blue Kiss. It is a 2019 Thai drama, uh, romance drama. Now, the reason why I'm reviewing this, I just did a review on Kiss Me Again, which is the prequel to Dark Blue Kiss and also the prequel to Kiss the series. So I want to actually go back to something I said in Kiss Me Again. Originally, I had said uh, if you just want to watch the clips of Pete and Cow's storyline, that's cool because you're not you don't really need to see the rest of it to follow along with Dark Blue Kiss. But then I realized Pete and Cow's storyline actually does cut out the scenes with Mork and Son in Kiss Me Again the series. So I would say you want to see the scenes with Mork and Son. It's not that many scenes with them, but the scenes they have together are really cute, especially like the scene where they're moving the table. Like it's just adorable and we kind of already get the idea that Mork has a little crush on Son even though he's not vocal on it really in any way. So just want to point that out. So Dark Blue Kiss. Uh, this one, the main stars are New and Tay who play Cow and Pete. At this point, they've been in a relationship for three years now. And this morph, uh, it sort of follows along with events that happens in Kiss Me Again. Like a lot of the things that happen in Kiss Me Again do come back up. But they still change a lot from that. They change a lot from Kiss the Series. One of the first things that um, they changed... Well, it comes a little bit later. But the photography. I spoke about how in Kiss Me Again, Cal was good at photography. And Sun asked him to actually take pictures for his... um, As promotional pictures for his cafe... Well, now Cow apparently can't, is not good at photography and is really bad at taking pictures <laughs> and needs Pete to teach him. That was like a complete, like they just re- reset the universe <laughs> all of a sudden and only kept the pieces that they needed to continue their storyline. What I figure is they're, they're trying to show that Pete is good at something because one of the things is how Pete is worried about uh, what his next step in life is, what's going to be going on. You know, everyone's planning their internships and he's not even sure he can get into any of the internship spots that they're, um, that everyone else is looking at. And so I guess they wanted to give him photography to show, Hey, he has a talent, but I don't know. Um, I, (laughs) I don't know. I I felt like, okay, so we're just going to take that from Cow and give it to Pete. Cool, I guess. Okay. (laughs) Um, Another uh, huge plot point with, I'm going to focus on Pete and Cow's story right now. Um, Another huge plot point, like basically the only plot point for the entire series is a situation with an entitled spoiled brat named Nun. Uh, so Non is in a competition called About a Boy, and, um, Pete, uh, because Pete knows the guy who runs the About a Boy page, he was actually asked to join the competition, and Pete just didn't feel like that's something he should do. Um, uh, one of the funny parts was his friends teasing him because he's more like, he's older, so it's more like About a Uncle instead of about a boy and there's even a situation where a girl outside of the event when he was like just going to the building to visit a girl calls him uncle so yeah he's too old to enter uh but because non just gets him angry (laughs) petty pete um decides to enter the competition now cow also has a run-in with pete with non sorry like I said, Nan is just a little spoiled brat. He goes to, uh, he basically just walks into Sun's Cafe, Rain and Sun's Cafe, and just orders a drink when it was obvious that Cal was already there and was there to order as well. They ended up ordering the same drink. So Nan is like, well, I'll just pay for your drink. And... This is where I kind of feel like Kyle should have just let it go. But, you know, look, at that point, he doesn't know this kid's age. He just knows this is a spoiled ass person. I'm sorry. This is a spoiled person. So 
he um, grabs the drink, they fight over it, it ends up spilling on Kyle's shirt, and Non follows Kyle to, you know, try and get his shirt clean and instead offers his um, jacket, you know, as a replacement so that uh, Pete will have something to wear. Not Pete, sorry, Kyle will have something to wear. Kyle and Pete meet at the cafe. Pete makes a comment about the shirt. Kyle explained what happened. Fast forward. Kyle, at this point, is a tutor. He's been tutoring kids, and his mom is a teacher at a high school. The principal uh, asked Kyle if he'd be willing to re- um, to tutor his son. Surprise, it's none. <laughs> Non. So Non is the son of the principal. And I just want to say real quick, I need to know what the salary is for principals in Thailand because I'm apparently in the wrong occupation. Did you see that house? Like, really (laughs) on a principal salary because if I recall my principal from high school like her car had rust on it so (laughs) what is this principal making what this principal making for real but anyway um so Kyle agrees to um tutor non because one it's his basically his mom's boss's son and two this could bring more opportunity to him imagine a principal recommending him As a tutoring service, that can actually bring more students. And he's been losing his students. Well, Pete finds out that Cal is tutoring this kid that he hates. And basically, they end up getting in fights about it. And Pete, again, petty (laughs) Pete, immature Pete, um, asks Cal to stop tutoring this kid. So, of course, and well... The argument was even better because Pete basically said, I will pay you double. You don't have to teach him. And Kyle base just pointed out to him, like, you're just giving me your dad's money. You're not even earning this yourself. And that, of course, hurts Pete's feelings. But at that point, I was like, his feelings need to be hurt. Like, he needs to grow up. So they make up. And Kyle agrees not to tutor um, Non anymore. But uh, he decides to keep tutoring him because, of course, he's getting more students from this because he's being recommended by the principal. Um, But he just decides to keep it a secret. And he lets Non know that this has to be a secret. We can't let Pete know. At this point, Non is developing a crush on Kyle. And Kyle is kind of, throughout the series, letting him know, you know, you need to back off. You're... You're invading, you're you're going too far and try to let him know nicely he's not interested. Uh, at this point, Pete and Kyle are still in the closet. Just like to point out, in case you watch Kiss the Series, don't, just ignore that. Pete and Kyle are still in the closet. <laughs> and not everyone knows about their relationship. So they haven't said outright, it's not, no, like, this is my boyfriend. I, please stop this. It's just, leave me alone, leave me alone. Uh, now... Non just being this entitled, spoiled brat just keeps it going and realizes that him getting close to Cal is making Pete angry. So keeps doing little things to keep getting on Pete's nerve. Like even and of course being really nice and polite in front of all their friends when Pete knows that you know this dude is a jerk. Stop. Like um the scene when they went to a restaurant they were all in like an outdoor restaurant and they're um getting their food and non comes over and sits with them because his friends aren't there and in front of the friends he's like oh i don't think pp wants me to sit here oh thank you so much oh i'll go and get that and then the second they go over um to the section and pete just lets them know look uh cow doesn't eat bacon he cooks it for me to eat and he and Non get into this little thing where <laughs> it's silly. The the what makes it sillier for me is because like Kyle is obviously treating Non as okay, this little kid likes me and I'm just gonna let him know I'm not interested. Um in a little kid way. Like I don't wanna bruise his ego, but I still wanna be nice to him and I have to think about the fact that he's my uh he's a son of my mom's boss and he's trying his best to just uh, be nice to the kid but Pete is <laughs> just acting on Non's level like they're both just acting like little kids 
Anyway, there is a engineering getaway where they uh, basically teenagers who are interested in getting into engineering come to this camp and seniors and well students at the university run the camp. So their team ends up getting the running the camp basically and having to plan all the activities because Tara um, wanted to get on the good side of a professor and offered his group up and made Sandy the leader <laughs> of everything of the whole camp. So uh, while there, Nan shows up because he said that he's interested in engineering. He shows up, joins it, um, uses it, of course, as an opportunity to supp- um, to, to um, advertise his About Boys um, page and the fact that he's selling t-shirts, please buy it. And then, of course, because um, Pete is the other person there who's also in the About Boy competition, he um, went and he um, pushed his little plug for his item. Uh, and that was just adorable so I'm going to jump into Pete's item real quick Pete and Cal um, because Pete was really nervous about having to do a speech Cal was like all right give me a second and got him a little teddy bear and it was like just being really cute and he's like why are you being cute stop he's like you can talk to the teddy bear the teddy bear will help you Uh, so Pete goes home with a teddy bear (laughs) his dad of course points it out like why do you have a teddy bear? And he explains that Cal gave it to him to help him, you know, with his speech and what doing that whole thing. He kind of thinks about it, like talking to this teddy bear, basically talking to the teddy bear gave him the idea of what if I put a chip in this and then we use it to talk like you actually press it and you talk. And Cal, of course, is uh, supportive of his boyfriend. Anyway, <laughs> fast forward. Going back to the Young Gear um, event, so uh, Pete, of course, plugs his item as well, and they have kids who, because they're all teens, some of them do do follow the About a Boy thing. I'm, I guess we're supposed to just assume that About a Boy, like competitions like that, if you're not from Thailand, you just assume that, okay, I guess that's a huge thing in Thailand, because in most other countries, we don't really have competitions like that. Like, that's not necessarily a huge thing. Uh, social media competitions, I've seen a few of those uh, where you vote and like to, like, promote this one person or pro- person you like. Uh, but, I mean, the only one I can really recall is an international men's competition. Well, women. there was an international women's and international men's. And it was just like, who you vote for the costume, whoever did their country's costume the best. That's the only one I can actually think of. But yeah, uh, they have people there who are fans uh, and taking pictures of them or with them and all that. Anyway, at the, <laughs> at the Young Gear camp, Non is in a uh, activity that Pete is running and his team loses the activity. So the leader of the team has to face the punishment. And it just so happened that the leader of the team is Non. So he has to eat basically chili peppers and he gets really sick. Once he gets really sick, um, basically the kids were just looking for someone to help. And because Kao was really nice, they go to Kao. Like, hey, Pete Kao, some one of my friends is sick. So Kyle was like helping him out and just letting him know, you know, if you're still sick, I'm going to go ahead and call your dad, make sure you're okay. And Pete comes basically running in and uh, petty Pete. (laughs) So Pete tells him uh, if you want to go, basically he's saying, you know, if you want to go take care of him so badly, go take care of him. And uh, petty, jealous Pete. And what's so funny to me, it's like they can only think of a jealous storyline because if you think of Kiss the series, which we're not going to focus on because it has nothing to do with Dark Blue Kiss. But in Kiss the series, the whole problem was that Cal was jealous of the friendship that Sandy and Pete have because of how close they are and the fact that he um, does really nice things for Sandy and they're just really close. And uh, now Pete is just jealous of everybody. Anyone gets close to Cal. Who's that? Why are they talking to you? No other guy can have you. (laughs) So stupid. And it's supposed to be cute. And it's like in a few instances, the jealousy is cute. Like they have the few cute jealousy instances. 
But for the most part, it's just not cute. Because it's almost as if he's saying, you can, you no, I want no one near you. I'm the only man who should ever be near you. One thing I will give Dark Blue Kiss the series, though, they're gay. They're not, they're not, oh, it's not that I like guys, I just like him. They're gay. And they talk about it in episode five, where they sit down and they talk about their sexual identity. And the fact that they have to prove that they are better than anyone else to be seen as good people. Like, I love that conversation. I also love um, later on, they were talking about, um, because Kao isn't out to his mom. And there was a conversation they had in the living room and the mom leaves and Pete just leans over and is like, Kao, I think your mom knows you need to talk to her. And there is talk between Kao and Pete about the fact that Kao feels like he's being pressured to come out to his mom and he's not ready. And that actually is a beautiful conversation as well because that, you know, because Pete is using the fact that his dad is just so open. His dad thinks their relationship is awesome because he sees how they better each other. He gives Pete condoms. <laughs> the condoms are awesome. He gives Pete condoms. And he's like talking to people to find out about, uh, like he's like trying to find out how to talk to his son about topics like this because for him he knows that it's different because it's he well he sees it as different because his son is dating a boy not a girl and my favorite conversation they had as well when his dad was asking him what it's like to date a boy and pete just goes it's like dating a girl except it's a guy <laughs> that that's that's it <laughs> that's the difference and when he's asking about their relationship he's just like you know it's the same we fight we make up <laughs> which that's not every relationship i just want to point out there's relationships where you don't have to keep fighting and making up but anyway um uh so that leads to a bunch of stuff the end of the camp non wants to get cow to sign something and not uh cow <laughs> signs on the paper basically letting now non know it's not that being young is bad because Don wants to know basically am I too young that's basically what the question was but Kyle just says I'm not interested in young guys basically (laughs) and Don like goes back to the dorm eventually and he's just reading it with a smile at the same time Pete is searching for Kyle and Pete finally finds Kyle and Kyle does this beautiful like anniversary present um and for like it's just the whole thing is beautiful with like Pete walking in and looking around and seeing everything that Kyle like Kyle basically like putting up things to signify different parts of their relationship it was beautiful uh so (laughs) that whole that's basically what happened at the young gear camp after that Nan was trying to be even braver and he uh made the line he said the line um, I know you don't like me, but should that stop? Um, that doesn't mean I can't like you. I think that was it. You don't like me, but that um, that doesn't mean I can't like you. And Pete's like really just trying to like be nice. Not Pete. Kyle's trying to be really nice to this kid. Uh, Pete finds out that he was tutoring Kyle all along. That Kyle was tutoring um, Nan all along. Uh, fights ensue. Drama, drama, drama. <laughs> and it gets to the point where um, actually. Before he finds out that Kyle was tutoring Nan, they made a bet. Kyle and Pete made a Nan and Pete made a bet that they would, whoever wins about a boy, would um, if Nan won. I can't remember what would happen because it doesn't matter. But if Pete won, <laughs> um, Nan has to leave them alone. And basically, Nan being the spoiled entitled brat. He, upon his loss, got people to post pictures of him and P- and Cow together. Tag Cow in it so Pete would see, it, or tag Pete in it so Pete would see it. I don't freaking know. <laughs> and um, of course, he also somehow ended up with a, a cup that Pete had given Cow. And in front of Pete, gives the cup to Cow. Be like, yes, you left this, Pete Cow. So of course, uh, Pete and Cow get in a fight. And they break up because of a snot-nosed teenager. I hated that. I hated that. I hated that. I hated that. Um, because, again, like I've been saying, this is a spoiled little brat. Like, And this is the like straw that breaks the camel's back. Like, this kid? Anyway. <laughs> 
So Non uh, apologizes to Cal uh, by bringing food over to Cal's house to thank him for tutoring him and he did so well. And Cal asks Non if he did all that on purpose because of course, you know, Pete has, uh, isn't he and Pete aren't talking. Uh, but of course, eventually they make up because that's how their life has kind of been. They fight, they make up, they fight, they make up. Uh, but not without the lack of non basically trying to keep them separated. Uh, again, this is a snot nosed teenager. Like, how do they even allow this? I'm still like, how do you, how do you allow this snot nosed teenager to break you up? Like, anyway. <laughs> Um, so it gets to the point now where while Pete and Pete and Kyle still weren't talking, Pete, uh, Kyle gets a call from someone explaining that they're with Non. Non is drunk. They don't want to call Non's dad because he will get in trouble and ask Pete if he can, uh, ask Kyle if he can come Pete Non, pick Non up. Kyle at first is like, no, you need to call somebody else. And he goes, fine. He goes, picks him up. Um, to get him um, back to his house. And while they're in his drunken stupor, Nan, of course, is telling Kyle how much he likes him. And Kyle is saying, I'm not interested. Uh, Nan grabs Kyle and they fall on the bed. And guess who opens the door? Nan's dad. Who, of course, um, when Kyle was like, look, just ask your son what happened. Uh, it's not what it looks like and leaves because he's just like, I, I want to get out of there. So, of course, Non, being a snot-nosed little brat, tells his dad that Cal was forcing himself on him and Cal was being inappropriate um, because, of course, he's f- afraid of his dad. Uh, this, of course, puts now Cal's job in danger because no one wants to get tutoring. Well, the tutoring, like, he he's losing his tutoring job because... With if parents find out, they're not going to want to send their kids to um, tutor at this particular academy. It happens in an episode, and so he's trying to keep silent about the whole situation. But of course, things are being posted online. There's a lot of people, of course, don't believe it, and so he still gets tutoring gigs here and there. But everything is being posted online, and he just gets to the point where he's like, you know, screw it, I'm done being silent. He posts his version of events. And uh, the dad is angry. And then, miraculously, everything is solved. Now, I left out a lot about how everything is solved and what situation actually caused everything to be solved. Because I need you to watch Dark Blue Kiss to see that for yourself. Because that whole, like, ending of that, it it kind of made me mad because of how quick it ended. And it... it it was too, it was too simple like that's how sitcoms solve situations because they need to move on to the next episode like there was one thing I will say that I did like that they showed um, which a lot of people wanted to see Non have a redeeming story arc because they feel like it's not his fault he's a little kid he's in this situation with a dad who's abusive um but I feel like ending it the way with the dad just basically saying, you know, don't tell me how to raise my son. He's my son. I'll raise him or whatever he says. It to me, it's accurate to life in situations like that. Everyone can't like follow behind that parent and make sure that parent isn't uh, treating their kid a certain way or, you know, like I can already imagine like there are kids who are in situations where they are afraid to come up because they have parents who are like that and would come up with lies like that will um be afraid that their parents would react in a way that puts them in danger so i think non in a sense would resonate with people who might feel they're in that kind of situation because it's true to life there are kids who if they came out if they're outed if anything like like I don't know what their home life would be like. Like, it, it's it's a scary situation. So, leaving that in, even though we all want a redeeming story arc or we want to see that he's good in the end, it it's sadly true to life. It's just sadly true to life. Um, 
and yeah, Pete and Kyle get back together. Now, reason why I'm kind of like just talking about Pete and Kyle like this, they were not my favorite couple in the series. So after the break, it's just going to be a very short break. I'm going to talk about my favorite couple who I feel like this series should have solely focused on. So stay tuned and see you on the other side. Okay, welcome to the other side. Um, So, yes, we're still talking about Dark Blue Kiss and the couple that I feel should have been the focus of this series. And that is Sun and Morg. Now, if you don't know why, it's not just because Fluke and Pod are just completely, absolutely adorable. But when doing my research about this whole story, it turns out... I don't remember, I didn't write on the name of what Dark Blue Kiss was supposed to be, the whatever the novel is, but the story originally focused on Sun and Mork. It wasn't about Pete and Cow, but of course because Pete and Cow are the popular ship from the entire Kiss series, they had a part in this as well. So everything we basically saw was from just writers who were putting in a story for, for Pete and Cow, and I don't I don't know if they were really good at it uh, because the story of Pete and Cow was just uninteresting compared to uh, to Sun and Mort. So Sun and his brother Rain, uh, well, Sun owns a cafe and his brother Rain works there with him. They both live and work at the cafe. Uh, Sun is annoying and <laughs> he nags a lot. He's very... He he thinks very highly of himself, it feels like. He has, like, this set of morals that, in a sense, he doesn't even fully live up to his own morals and standards. Uh, so, Sun does not like Rain's best friend, Mork. Mork is a... <laughs> kind of a little thug uh he fights a lot but he fights again for his own morals he's very defensive of his friends and we even see that in kiss me again where he before that may have i don't think he ever met pete before but in the beginning of uh kiss me again he beats pete up because hey my friend rain doesn't like him so i don't like him (laughs) and they have this like weird hate for each other all because you know, Rain doesn't like this guy. I don't like this guy. And that's the end of it. Uh, so, in uh, Dark Blue Kiss, we see Sun. He owns his uh, cafe. He and his brother work there, like I said. And we have Mork, the friend he hates. So, a lot of things that happen with Sun that I really like. One of my favorite things, we see him in a nightclub with his friends. And his friends are talking about how he needs to get a girlfriend and he should go get this girl's number. And if he doesn't want the girl's number, give the girl's number to them. And it kind of makes me sad watching that because I had hope, like, especially seeing that son kind of looked like a confident gay. I thought he would have had, like, friends who knew about him. And then it was like, oh, he's in the closet too. <laughs> it was like, oh, that's kind of sad. And at first I thought, wow, he's alone in this. No one really knows about him. Um, except Pete, Cow, and most likely his brother, and, well, maybe not even his brother, and, and I'll get to why, maybe not even his brother in a sec, and that was kind of interesting, um, to see, but what was the fun part of that episode, he looks over and he sees his brother in a nightclub, and he goes over to lecture him, but (laughs) he is gone, uh, Rain basically just grabs stuff, leaves, and ends up leaving with Mork's bike. <laughs> so Sun tells Mork he'll give him a ride home. <laughs> that whole scene leading up to the ride home in the club was funny, and the ride home was funny too. Um, was that an episode where he walked into the door? I think he walked him even to his door. Sun has this whole attitude where you guys are supposed to be studying. You have no need for partying. Why are you smoking? Smoking smells like... He's just... He just nags a lot, but it's cute when he and Mark are doing it because they're both 
going at each other they're both like shouting at each other and in their little it, but it's it's kind of like they're they're bickering because there's something else there and neither of them wants to talk about it uh one of my favorite scenes is mark um no mark and son are texting each other but through rain so um son takes rain's phone and is sending messages to mark and rain just grabs the phone and sends a message to mark like this is his line add my brother stop talking to him on my phone and turns to son is like i've already given you his line id stop texting him from my phone (laughs) and um eventually because all right there's this chick her name is manau lemon i now know what lemon is because of uh dark blue kiss and until we meet again manau (laughs) um but yeah manau came in because she is one of cow's uh students that he tutors she left a usb there and (laughs) my man rain played it cool it was like yeah when i when i find your usb why don't you give me your line id and i'll uh get in touch with you and let you know when i found it the whole time her usb is sitting (laughs) behind uh the counter um man he that was slick it it was slick (laughs) If, if he wasn't cute that wouldn't have worked well in his favor at all anyway he and Manau kind of uh, create a friendship where she wants him to teach her to make cakes. And um, when she finally makes the cake, he finds out that, oh, no, she likes Mork. So that's an underlying storyline. It's beautiful um, watching <laughs> Rain be all upset about it because <laughs> he's adorable. The actor who plays Rain is just adorable. But anyway, uh Sun and Mork, they're going through, they're nagging back and forth. There's a situation that happens where Rain and Mork end up getting arrested because of a fight. And Sun has to bail him out. Uh, He doesn't really listen to why they were arrested. He doesn't care why they were arrested. They were arrested and that was it. Um, And Rain brings that up too. Rain Rain and Mork kind of bring it up that he keeps nagging about things. And he doesn't even know the full situation. He just assumes uh, that Mork, because it's Mork... He's automatically in the wrong and he wants Mork to pay him back the bail money. Uh, of course, uh, Rain lets Mo- uh, Son know that Mork is looking for a job and what's kind of going on in Mork's life. So he feels bad and he actually hires Mork at the cafe. And this is where we finally get a huge progression in their relationship. We see the that them for we see more and more that for them fighting is flirting because it's just arguing back and forth and that's kind of how they are when they flirt with each other. They just don't know any other way because they've never talked to each other in any other way. Um, <laughs> but what I love is there's this uh, scene where because Sun is getting ready for a competition. Uh, a barista competition. I will still never understand barista competitions. Maybe it's because I'm just not a coffee person. But the, <laughs> these barista competitions, I'm just like, whatever. But he's getting ready for a huge barista competition, which could actually increase the popularity of his cafe. So Mort goes around with him tasting different places coffee that he finds the place that he likes the coffee of. And he's trying to get the guy to give him the, um, like where they get their coffee beans. And the guy tells him he can't tell him that it's actually a secret for them, a trade secret for them. So Mort goes in and gets the guy. He doesn't get the guy to tell him. He basically just talks to the guy and distracts the guy long enough to get the guy to leave and go back inside and they can go through the trash and get the bag. The reason why they did he did that is because the guy was outside smoking. So I guess that was a way to just get rid of him. Anyway, so they get the bag. They get the name of the coffee farm and this. So Sun offers to take Mork home. Mork is finally agrees to take the ride. And they're driving and they just keep driving. And Mork's like, this is not the way to my dorm. And Sun explains that they're going on search to find the coffee farm where these beans come from. So they're going. Um, so of course, Sun, uh, Mork is like, "Are you kidding? No, I don't want to do this." Finally, he agrees, and he falls asleep. Now, usually, I'd be like, "He just kidnapped this person. What is he doing?" But because of how, 
I have to say because I, maybe it's because of how well the actors did it, or maybe maybe it was the script with Son and Mork's storyline. I was down. I was like, this is hilarious because it fits in with their personalities and it fits in with how they fight with each other and interact with each other. So to me, that was like a perfect scene of, yeah, that, that's Sun and Mort. That's something Sun would totally do. And Mort just agreeing to go along eventually. Like um, Rain even points out at some point that Mort just does what, son tells him and Mork's like no I don't <laughs> because both of them still have this pride about them they're like we will not admit that we're, we're basically bowing down to the other person never uh, but anyway they go on the search for the coffee farm and at some point they stop at a restaurant to eat some food uh, Mork's messing around and puts a lot of seasoning in uh, son's soup so son goes to get the soup exchanged a uh, little situation happens where they basically get into a fight with a chef and the chef throws the soup on Mork. Uh, they leave because Sun basically pulls Mork out of there. They leave and they go and they find a hotel. And the hotel only, of course, who, who knows this trope? Trope. You go to a hotel, you don't have a room booked. When you get to the hotel, what go, what happens? They only have one room left. How many beds in that room? One. Are you okay with sleeping with each other? So they go <laughs> to the room. And this is, to me, the best scene ever. Uh, in the middle of the night, Sun wakes up to singing. Goes out and sees Mork is out on the balcony of the room and playing the guitar and singing a song. And Mork explains that he doesn't really do that in public. And they talk for a bit. And then at this point, Mork has been drinking. They show that Mork has already had like three cans of beer at this point. Uh, so Mork like chugs down a beer, looks at Sun and goes, do you like guys? Like just straight out asks him. And Sun kisses him and is like, is that, is, is that an answer? <laughs> There's your answer. They um, continue to kiss. And then Sun says to him, do you like guys? And Mork says, I don't know, and walks away. Why I love that scene. Um, again, we ta- I'm, I'm talking about Sun being like this confident gay guy. Like, he's just so confident in who he is. That's why for me, like, even that scene where he's with friends who don't know about him, I was like, oh, he doesn't have friends who know um, but also we see more of Mork's shyness because one of the things, he's a really quiet guy. He doesn't talk much. Um, he talks when he needs to. And in that moment, just he he's really honest. You can, like it, It's just something about it. It's just really adorable. Uh, the next day, Sun in his annoyingness um, gets change of clothes for them and buys a couple's shirt. <laughs> Watch it to see the couple's shirt. It's I actually really want that couple shirt. I would love that. Um, and then while we're in the couple shirt, they, I guess, rent a bike and go riding around. Who knows? Anyway, before that, they finally find, oh, they found the coffee guy. They they get coffee beans. <laughs> Moving on. He went to get coffee beans and he didn't bring money. Now tell me, if you're planning to go to the countryside to buy some rare fruit, you don't know if these people have a good internet connection where they are because... You know, some companies have straight up just admitted that they don't even bother going out to um, backwards areas because they don't see any, they don't believe they're going to get any money there. So they don't care about them, basically. Okay. So <laughs> you're telling me you're not going to bring cash? <laughs> he going to show up with his card? The guy just tell him, you need, um, you can just transfer the money into my account. <laughs> that was funny. I like that guy. I really liked that guy. Anyway, they go on a bike ride. They go sightseeing. It's very flirtatious, the bike ride, um, the sightseeing part, um, because uh, I haven't talked about it, but before Sutton wanted to talk to Mork about the situation, Mork doesn't want to talk about it um, because he's still trying to internalize what it is and everything. And then they go on the bike ride, and then that was actually a really romantic little sightseeing thing. Uh, Then they're met by the guy. I don't know how he found them. The guy who was at the restaurant found them. <laughs> and um, 
comes with his friends to beat them up. Because of it, Sun gets injured. And remember, Sun has a barista competition. This is going to affect it. But anyway, they get back to Bangkok and uh, Sun asks Mort to spend the night uh, with him in his room. (laughs) And they have a serious conversation uh, where Sun just lays it out. Look, I like you. This is a situation. Um, Let me prove to you how I feel about you. And I need you to do something for me. No more getting into fights because the last fight he got into got Sun injured. Actually, a couple fights. No, Sun started that fight. He deserved to be punched. No, he didn't deserve to be punched, but, uh, anyway, (laughs) uh, so Sun and Mort make their little agreement as to how they're going to go forward. We get some more flirtation and we even get Mort mentioning like, this is weird the way they're treating each other now. Let's go back to the old way because they were more comfortable just like fighting all the time. Uh, one of the cutest scenes for me. I'm like mixing up episodes and jumbling through because there's so many amazing scenes. But one of the cutest scenes with Sun and Mork uh, was Mork telling Sun what to go do. And remember, Sun is the owner. Mork tells him what to do and Sun does it. <laughs> to the point where there's a part where Rain is messing with him. He's like, man, you're like the henpecked wife. <laughs> you're, well, you're the henpecked by your wife. <laughs> And he goes, uh, well, no, you got to stop that. Uh, Mork's here. Hey, Mork. And Sun freaks out like, huh? don't do that. <laughs> because he just listens to whatever Mork says. Anyway, um, so Kitty shows up. I love Kitty. Kitty is amazing. She is beautiful. She like, I, I should have looked up the name of the actress who played her because I was like, she is so good. And we do find out finally that he does have friends who know about him son <laughs> kitty is son's friend wait if you haven't seen the drama you don't know that kitty is son's friend and we find out he actually does have a friend who knows about him who knows about uh, the fact that he's gay and she <laughs> sees the apron on mork so she automatically knows ah he's into this dude we find out she's an ex-girlfriend of course that creates some jealousy for mork and but she relaxes his fears which is really cute um, she's helping Sun get ready for the competition, and then um, he, of course, goes. He does the competition. Stuff happens. I won't. I won't uh, give you the details on that because I don't want to spoil that. Because it's just so heartbreaking that competition. If you haven't seen it, if you have seen it, let's let them. Let's let them watch it. Um, anyway. <laughs> While the competition is going on, we have thugs enter the cafe. So, Mork ends up in the hospital. That whole scene with Sun running in and basically just shouting at Mork in the hospital. First of all, I was like, you're telling me there's no doctors or nurses nearby who are like, sir, this is a library. Well, this is a hospital. <laughs> Sorry, you need to be quiet. We have people here. We can't deal with the noise. Like, you're telling no one? He just runs in and starts shouting at him, and Rain is even telling him to shut up. <laughs> like, leave him alone. You don't even know the full story. So, because of the argument, Mork quits. And, uh, Manau, I should bring up because she finds where Mork is working, lets him know she likes him, he lets her know he's not interested. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody cares about that. But anyway, <laughs> uh Rain also knows that uh Mork has a new job. Eventually he lets his brother know like, yeah, he's at some place called Boss Cafe or whatever it is and Mork knows exactly where this cafe is because guess who he went there with? <laughs> so he goes to the cafe to try and talk to Mork. That that doesn't work out. But uh, I'm trying to like go through my notes and everything because I'm like, what happened there again? What happened there again? But eventually, um, eventually, of course, Mork and Son make up. How they make up is Rain says he's going to a nightclub. Son's like, I'll drop you off at this nightclub. And Rain, of course, is like, you hate when I go to nightclubs. (laughs) But he goes to the nightclub with uh, Rain. And Rain, this is the part where I'm like, somebody needs to tell Rain to shut up. But at the same time, oh my god, Rain is a treasure. 
Rain shows up with a uh, son, and when Mark is like, "What is he doing here?" He straight up looks at Mark and says, "Stop playing hard to get and go talk to him." They talk. It doesn't work out. Rain goes back to the cafe with both of them and just lets them know he's tired of this. Sort your stuff out. Either you're together or you're not together. I'm done. <laughs> and they're together. But the whole scene of them um, having their little conversation and uh, cleaning up wounds and stuff like that. Again, usually in storylines where I see like abuse, fighting, hitting, um, stuff like that. And like just like taking your person off, basically kidnapping them. I'd be like, oh my God, this is a horrible storyline. How could you do that? Um, we're, we're not supposed to be glorifying this abuse. But in this situation, it really works with Sun and Mort because it's completely on point with the growth of them. Because they, like, in for their story, they needed that one big fight. It didn't have to be a physical fight. It could have just been a huge argument. They needed that so they can both move forward with just saying what they hate, what they, li- what they hate about each other, or what they just dislike about each other. Um... I don't feel like, I kind of feel like the argument didn't go far enough. <laughs> I, w- I would have loved it if they were like shouting at the top of the lungs. And then it was like, and that's why I love you. Like, that would have been perfect. <laughs> because they kind of remind me of like a movie. Co- like if if Dark Blue Kiss with Sun and Mark was just a movie, I would have totally watched it. Because they would have been like, to me, the perfect uh, main couple for a movie. Like their love story to me is amazing it's i wish uh gmm tv would actually just put out cuts of their storyline because i don't need to watch pete and cow storyline again i know a lot of people are fans of pete and cow and i get it the tay and you are really good at um portraying that chemistry the storyline with pete and cow and their parents was awesome i actually really love the storyline with their parents that, that was the best part of the storyline. And Pete, like, wanting to make sure, like, talking about how the pressure of feeling like he has to be good. He has to do well so that he um, won't be seen by other people as a disappointment to his father. Even though his father is not disappointed whatsoever in, in him, he knows if that people would judge him and be like, oh, how could he do that to his father? Even though his father loves him and obviously loves Kyle as well and is just happy to see that his son is happy. That's the only part of Pete and Kyle's storyline I liked in Dark Blue Kiss. But Son and Mork's storyline, I was not disappointed at any point. I especially love when Rain told Manau without Mork's permission about his sexuality and Manau and Mork have a conversation where she's like, if you just told me you like him, I would have told you how much I approve and I would have helped you. With and Mork just being really angry at Rain for that. And then finally, when they had a chance to talk about it, letting him know, look, only reason I wouldn't beat you up, you are my friend, but don't ever do that again. Don't tell people unless I like let me tell people when I'm ready to tell people because even though their friend group knows about the relationship because of uh, especially the really cute there's a really cute scene um because for Mork's birthday where everyone's giving him presents and Rain gives him a motorcycle helmet he's like I already have a motorcycle helmet it's like oh it's not for you it's uh for someone to ride on the back of your bike everyone's like Ooh! <laughs> because it's of course sun and Mork <laughs> And everyone knew, like everyone in their friend group who was there knew about the relationship and was so supportive of the relationship. And Mork is obviously comfortable. Well, he's still a little uncomfortable, but he's comfortable in this situation, especially when um, Sun was giving him his present and (laughs) he actually wore the present. Like, I feel like if he was really like uncomfortable, like, oh my God, these people, I don't want them to know. It would have been like, "Uh, I'm out of here. But no, he, he's at a level of comfort with everyone there knowing about him. Uh, and he kind of just lets Rain know, like, let me do it in my own 
time and i love that that was a subject that was brought up letting people come out on their own time they did cover that a little bit in pete and cows but pete and cows won the whole time i was going dude just tell your mom it's obvious she knows like just, just tell her she's not stupid but in mark's situation i could see him like especially when you see him and his personality and how shy and quiet he is i can see him feeling like he needs to do it and in his own space pace and time because he really may not be comfortable he's he seems to not be comfortable even with a large crowds like he likes his small group of friends and that's it so yeah <laughs> son and mork um another amazing scene that i actually really like so at the end um we see son and mork talking about mork spending the night and of course uh, okay, I'll say it this way. Sun talks to Morg about either being sleeping on the bed or on the floor. You know, who wants to be on the top of the bed? <laughs> I think that's the best way to put it. Um, and why I really like that is because there was a conversation. Like, usually in a lot of these shows, they make it like, oh, here's a short guy and a tall guy. We know who is the the um <laughs> giver of the relationship <laughs> i'm trying so hard not to i, I don't want to be too graphic because i don't want to have to put this on my explicit list <laughs> i'm trying to be clean as possible here <laughs> but um yeah I, I mean i guess i could say that i mean it's not it's not rude they've made it clear that there's versatility in their relationship i, I found a way to do it <laughs> But yeah, I actually why I really enjoy that because like I said, like a lot of these especially Thai BL shows, they make it very he does this, he does this. And <laughs> well, and the truth is in real life, it's not always like that. <laughs> um a lot of people, they like versatility in their relationships. <laughs> and they're showing that hey, this relationship is very versatile. <laughs> and um, I think that is a good message for one people who do because there's still a lot of people who do the so who's the man and who's the woman shut up <laughs> here you go there you go that that's your answer and even and to well, I mean we shouldn't really care about what people are doing in their rooms but sadly that's the reality we live in and two there are um, I would say younger people who also think that's the only way in a relationship but they're they're very young um they get older and they realize <laughs> that's not the truth of everything um so rating of dark blue sky straight 9.5 definitely a must watch only because of sun and work if i had to focus on pete and cow storyline only because of non like the the rating would drop dramatically not even gonna talk about that um but because Sun and Mork's storyline is so amazing 9.5 all the way I think all the actors did a really good job in this if anything I actually prefer the acting of the gang the friend group of Pete and Cow in Dark Blue Kiss more than I did in Kiss Me Again I really feel like in Kiss Me Again it was really really poor script writing and it just didn't do as well for me but for dark blue kiss um it was definitely a better script but i feel like they just didn't know what to do with pete and cow because like hey we've run out of ideas for these guys what do we do uh jealousy add jealousy into the mix oh god oh pete and cow anyway but Sun and Mark, I think, were portrayed wonderfully. Their whole storyline was amazing. I will say I really love the conversation Mork and Pete had. Because remember, Mork and Pete don't like each other at all in Kiss Me Again. And you can see that there's still a little tension between them when they see each other at the coffee shop. But they end up just sitting down and talking because they're both in the situation where they're in relationships. Uh, or they're having like a relationship trouble with um respective boyfriend not boyfriend <laughs> um they need um they help out they end up kind of helping each other talk through that in a bit and giving someone to talk to who kind of understands where they're coming from 
so i really enjoyed that I left out a lot because I didn't want to spoil too much. I have to say the teddy bear scene between um, Pete and Cal when making the teddy bear, beautiful. Definitely watch it. But that is all the time I have. <laughs> That's all I'm going to review right now with uh, Deep Dark Blue Kiss. Uh, make sure I keep calling it deep blue kiss anyway make sure you follow me on twitter not twitter sorry instagram uh, don't forget to check this out on youtube i'll post a link in the description to actually watch dark blue kiss on youtube uh this is jd young thank you so much you can listen to me on spotify or on anchor.fm slash time for bl and thank you so much for making some time for bl Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever it is, wherever you are.